Praise be Jesus in heaven. Today's reading speaks to us of the fundamental role of faith. The eunuch believes in the one God and goes to Jerusalem to worship him. He believes the gospel taught by Philip and receives baptism and salvation. The Jews in Capernaum, on the other hand, find it hard to believe Christ's words and do not listen to the Father who instructs inwardly. This could have terrible consequences. If they do not believe, they will not eat the bread of life, and therefore they will die eternally. Christ came to seek and to save the lost, and so works and, and seeks to, to bring them to the faith that is necessary for salvation. He says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. This may seem strange, and so he quotes what Isaiah said, they shall all be taught by God. Isaiah said this speaking of the children of Jerusalem, that is, of the city of God that is the church. They shall all be taught by God because he instructs inwardly, while Christ's words sound outwardly. And he does this even now at this Holy Mass. He sends graces that allow us to grasp the message and receive the gift of faith. The inner teacher can even teach more than the preacher's words mean. Indeed, he can reveal the hidden, hidden meaning of the scriptures. Whoever accepts the teaching of the interior teacher comes to Christ, and whoever believes has eternal life. For the life of grace is already eternal life, though not in the fullness with which it will be possessed in heaven. In heaven, Christ is the bread of angels, sustaining eternal life in, in them, in the angels, by the vision of God. On earth, he is likewise the bread of life, in his word and in the Eucharist, who sustains in us the life of faith, hope, and love, which is eternal life. The manna that the Jews ate in the desert was only a symbol of this. It had no power in itself to sustain eternal life. Therefore, Christ says, your ancestors ate the manna in the desert and they died. They died in soul and they died in body. Christ is the living and life-giving bread that came down from heaven. He came down from heaven as with the dewfall. The manna of old uh, descended with the dew, with the dew, in, and when the dew uh, left, when the dew uh, vanished, then the, the manna was seen on the ground. The new manna descends with the, the dewfall that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon Mary, who is the virgin earth. And when the Holy Spirit uh, departs in the sense of no longer uh, fulfilling this function, then the, the new manna is seen, or the new manna is, is at, very, at the least present in Our Lady's wombs. The manna prefigured Jesus, but it was only a shadow. He is the reality. He is the true manna. If anyone eats of this bread of Christ, he will live forever. St. Paul says, though our outer man is wasting away, our inner man is being renewed every day. And this, not only by, by God's grace working in our soul, but, but uh, particularly by that grace that works through the Holy Eucharist, by the grace that we receive in the Eucharist. This living bread is the flesh of Christ, given for the life of the world. It was given in sacrifice on the cross. And Isaiah spoke of that sacrifice, which was consummated on, on Calvary, in the very passage that the eunuch was reading when Philip was sent to him. This Philip is not the apostle, but one of the deacons ordained together with St. Stephen. He evangelized in, in Samaria, and now an angel has sent him on a special mission. The eunuch to whom he is sent is not from the present-day Ethiopia, but from a, a kingdom south of Egypt on the Nile, a kingdom in what is now uh, Sudan. The fact that he travels in a chariot is a sign that he is particularly wealthy. He believes in the one God. He came to, to Jerusalem to worship him. But because he was a eunuch, he could not enter into covenant with God by becoming a Jew. And so he could not enter the temple court, which was reserved for the men of Israel. But in the book he is reading, you know, we can imagine how fervently he must have prayed in the court of, of the Gentiles, wishing that, that somehow he could, could uh, enter into that covenant, that somehow he could be uh, a full member. In the book that he's reading, Isaiah, God makes this promise to the eunuchs who will keep his law. I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. 
Philip was sent to make that possible, to give this eunuch a place in God's house. He begins with the passage that the eunuch is reading. It is one of the servant songs of Isaiah. The prophet is not speaking about himself, but about the servant of the Lord who was to come. And now he has come, Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, took the form of a servant, and suffered, died, and rose for us. He gives eternal life to those who believe and are baptized. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? In the longer version of the Acts of the Apostles that is found in some manuscripts, Philip then said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he said in reply, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. A profession of faith is required before baptism, and this is a very basic one. So then Philip baptized the eunuch, and by the way, this shows that a eunuch can be a minister of this sacrament. Now the eunuch had a place in the house of God. Now he was part of the covenant, and of an even better covenant than the one from which he had been excluded. Now he had the right to eat of the bread of life. He could well say with the, the, the psalmist, Blessed be God, who refused not my prayer or his mercy. Praised be Jesus and Mary. Amen.